When looking for habitable exoplanets, white dwarfs are often overlooked. This is for a few reasons, like how we know very few planets around white dwarfs, and more importantly, they're dead stars. A white dwarf is just the remains of the core of a star similar to the sun that already became red giant and died, and that's usually an event that stops planets from being habitable. For example, when the sun becomes a red giant, it'll boil away all of Earth's water and leave it a dry, barren rock, assuming it doesn't just destroy Earth entirely by swallowing it. Plus, these stars are extremely dim, making the habitable zone very close to them, usually between 0.1 and 0.01 AU. That's also a problem, as any planets anywhere near this region would have been destroyed when their star became a red giant. So, for a planet to even have the chance of being habitable around a white dwarf, it would have had to form far enough away from the star to both gather icy material and be largely unaffected by the red giant phase, and then somehow migrate hundreds of times closer to the star. And even after that, it'll still have a ton of problems that will be important for this video. That's a pretty tall order. However, there's a reason some astronomers are still searching for habitable planets around white dwarfs. One of them being we do see planetary material closer to white dwarfs than the habitable zone. For example, WD 1145 plus 017 has an extremely hot asteroid belt with objects about 0.005 AU away. This star likely used to be an A-type main sequence star 2.5 times the mass of the Sun, so it was also a pretty big red giant at some point. There's also WD 1856 plus 534, a planet at least 80% the mass of Jupiter orbiting 0.02 away from its white dwarf. So not only can planetary material exist this close to a white dwarf, but large planets, even planets closing in on Jupiter-sized, can somehow exist in this region. How this material and these planets got here is another question, but we do know that it's there. The second reason that white dwarfs are very dim, and that's very good for the study of exoplanets. The dimmer the star is, the larger and sharper a planetary transit appears, because it's blocking a larger percentage of the light. In the case of WD 1145 plus 017, the transits are so clear that we can see individual asteroids passing in front of the star. Compare that to stars bigger than the Sun, where it's nearly impossible to see the transits of gas giants larger than Jupiter. So, if a white dwarf has transiting planets, they are very easy to see, and very easy to characterize. So, though the chances of finding habitable planets may be low, they'd just be so easy to see that they're worth looking for anyways. White dwarfs are also extremely stable stars. They don't do nuclear fusion, and only glow from residual heat. They don't give off flares like main sequence stars and are extremely calm, increasing the chances for planets around them to have atmospheres. They slowly cool off over billions of years, meaning any planets that do find themselves in the habitable zone could have Earth-like temperatures for a very long time. So, this all kind of seems like white dwarfs may be a decent place to look for habitable planets. However, there's a few big problems I haven't mentioned yet. Because the habitable zone is so close to the star, any planet in it would be guaranteed to be tidally locked. What exactly that means for habitability is something I'll talk about in a future video, but in short, while it does still look like you can get habitable tidally locked planets, it may be rarer than planets with a day-night cycle. The bigger problem is our runaway greenhouse effect. White dwarfs, despite having radii about the size of Earth, are extremely dense objects. In a white dwarf the radius of Earth, there may be half a sun's worth of mass crammed into it. For comparison, that's about 500 Jupiter masses, in an object only slightly bigger than Earth. That much mass will lead to incredible tidal forces on planets that close to the star, which is very bad. Jupiter's moon Io is the most volcanically active object in the solar system, and that happens because it's fairly close to Jupiter. Imagine what will happen to planets on similar orbits to Io are on an object 500 times more massive than Jupiter. A greenhouse effect can be avoided if the planet's orbit is perfectly circular. If its distance from the white dwarf never changes, no part of the planet will be pulled on harder than any other. However, perfect circles do not exist in nature, and it seems that almost perfect won't be enough for white dwarf planets. Some studies suggest that eccentricities as low as 0.0001 or 1 in 10,000 will be high enough to induce a runaway greenhouse effect and make white dwarf planets uninhabitable. For comparison, Earth's eccentricity around the Sun is 0.017, 170 times higher, and our orbit is already almost a perfect circle. Even Venus, the least eccentric planet in the solar system, has an eccentricity nearly 70 times higher than the 1 in 10,000 limit around white dwarfs. While it may be theoretically possible for a planet to reach such a low eccentricity on its own, the presence of just one additional planet could throw it off just slightly enough to trigger a runaway greenhouse effect. Such perfect orbits, if they're even possible at all, are probably so rare there may not be a single habitable white dwarf planet anywhere in this galaxy. But a new study challenges this. 
they find that general relativity can act as a shield for white dwarf planets, potentially keeping them habitable for long time scales, even in the presence of additional planets. So first, what happens without the presence of general relativity? Ignoring relativity, they find that any planet within 0.18 AU of a planet in the habitable zone can cause eccentricity oscillations in the habitable zone planet, triggering a runaway greenhouse effect and rendering it uninhabitable. This is because as the planets get closer and further away from each other as they move on their separate orbits, they pull on each other more or less depending on where they are. This leads to both planets' orbits become slightly more and slightly less eccentric depending on where they are. Around normal stars, this effect is negligible and can be ignored, but around white dwarfs, even the tiniest change can have drastic consequences for the planets. Larger planets can affect the habitable zone planet at much further distances. We currently don't know what the average white dwarf system will look like because we know of very few white dwarf systems. But if white dwarf systems are similar to the compact systems of red dwarfs, where the planets can be much closer together than 0.18 AU, that could be a problem. If they're similar to the population of pulsar planets, planets orbiting neutron stars, the remains of stars much bigger than the Sun, where the systems can also get pretty compact, that's also an issue. This is all confirmed by simulations of hypothetical white dwarf systems. Because tidal forces are so strong in the habitable zone, even the tiniest, most minor change, like a shift in eccentricity of less than 0.001, is the difference between a habitable planet and a super Venus. However, this paper ran 576 simulations while accounting for the effects of general relativity. In their simulations, they created two planets, one in the habitable zone and an outer planet. In each simulation, they varied the mass of the outer planet, from one Earth mass to 300, or roughly one Jupiter mass, and changed its distance from the habitable zone planet from 0.05 to 0.3 AU. They put the habitable zone planet at 0.01 AU away from the star, and assume a runaway greenhouse effect will begin if the planet's eccentricity rises over 0.0001. And they got some interesting results. They find that general relativity could protect the habitable zone planets, due to its effects on the eccentricity of planets. This has been verified to be true in our own solar system, as the precession of Mercury's orbit can only be explained if general relativity is correct. In white dwarf systems, this precession could significantly weaken or even nullify eccentricity oscillations caused by the outer planets. In short, even a small amount of orbital eccentricity could trigger a runaway greenhouse effect, but when accounting for relativity, that eccentricity may not be there. But firstly, any planet bigger than 250 Earth masses between 0.05 and 0.3 AU away from the habitable zone planet will inevitably trigger a runaway greenhouse effect, and there's no way around it, according to the paper. So, for a white dwarf planet to be habitable, it can't have any large gas giants anywhere nearby. However, as the planet mass gets smaller, the effects of general relativity, such as apsidal precession, which has been observed in our own solar system, can counteract the gravitational forces of the second planet, and keep the habitable zone planet's eccentricity below 0.0001. And the intensity of the eccentricity oscillations are significantly lower when accounting for relativity, especially if the planet's mass is smaller. While red and red greenhouse effects still occur very frequently, it's significantly less than previous estimates, which is seen in this figure here. Now this doesn't mean that every white dwarf planet with a low eccentricity automatically has a chance of being habitable. A one red greenhouse effect could still begin anyways if, for example, the planet has a thick steam atmosphere made of evaporating icy material. And planets in the habitable zones of white dwarfs may still be very rare. We currently don't have any examples of Earth-sized rocky plants in white dwarf habitable zones, mainly because of the low chances for the planet to even transit in the first place, as well as the short durations of the transits. However, also keep in mind this paper assumes that the companion planet exists within 0.3 AU of the habitable zone planet, which may not always be the case. If other planets don't exist in the system, or are very far away, it could further increase the chances of habitability. So while white dwarfs may not be the most obvious place to look for habitable planets, they do have a few things going for them that could set them apart from other stars. Of course, because they're slowly cooling over time, all planets around them will eventually freeze to death, but there is a fairly long period of time, likely several billion years, where a planet could have stable, habitable conditions. And while it does need to have a near-perfect orbit and appropriately sized planetary neighbors, this paper shows that's not impossible, and while rare, likely means that there could be potentially habitable planets around these dead stars in this galaxy. Hopefully we find a few of these candidates soon. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space exploration.